About a year ago I decided to make a car toppable cruising boat that I could take to Tasmania with me. This boat is called Shadow and it's um, a surf ski, it's an old Hayden surf ski that's been adapted to become a tacking prower and it's got a couple of unusual features on it. For a start because it's a surf ski there are no through bolted connections there are some through glassed parts like the mast step of the unstayed mast um, and the um, cleat pad behind that for the downhaul and the halyard is bonded onto the skin but the main structural part of the boat is these rails that you can see they're bonded onto the outside of the skin with no through connection and uh, there's a few layers of glass there painted over and they're bonded to fiberglass on the sides to enable them to um, stick onto the hull without um, breaking anything and with distributing the stresses that are on these points. The reason why these things have to be fairly strong and they have to be anchored this way is twofold. One is the skin of this hull is about one millimetre thick so if you bolt something to it the bolt will just pull out. The other thing is that the integrity of the hull is really important because it's a surf ski and the idea is that it doesn't fill up with water so you don't want holes in the hull if you can avoid them or as few as possible. These frames you can see here are just bent pieces of 25 mil aluminium tubing and they form a kind of a structure to hold the outrigger poles on or armors. So these are held in place with lashings um, that are secured to the hull or, or to the ar arcas, the, the outrigger poles and to the hull and provide a relatively rigid framework yet to be tested. Uh, you might notice something slightly strange here is that all of the fittings here, all of the attachments are made with these aluminium 10 millimeter with rod that's, that are made into pins and these pins um, are attached and held in place by a, a little drill through a bit of non a bit of high um, strength line and some elastic. Uh, the reason I did that was because I don't like putting unlike metals together so um, I was trying to avoid stainless steel and I really just wanted to pursue it as far as it could go. The other thing, interesting thing about these is that if they break or fail or get lost they can be replaced temporarily with a piece of rope, a, you know, a reasonably strong piece of rope. The other feature of a lot of the fittings on this boat is that many many things are attached with cord so you'll see here that there's a fitting attached to the rail here it's not attached by a fire an eye or anything like that it's just a bit of cord with some high abrasion resistant braiding um, wrapped around it and um, anchored to um, just simple holes in this railing so that's kind of the design philosophy of the boat really is don't puncture the hull bond everything on with fiberglass, make sure you spread the stresses out and um, see if we can pin everything together rather than bolting things together. The other slight advantage of these bolts by the way is that because they're a relatively large diameter they sp spread a relatively large amount of stress on these railings here. Um, here we've got a fitting which holds all of the uh, conventional eyes and cleats uh, or most of them for the boat. This is uh, rotatable and it's pinned in place and the reason for that is because uh, I wanted to be able to spread over the top of it a, um, a um, trampoline for camping on. It's got a leeboard here, the leeboard's coated in um, graphite in, in, um, in um, epoxy with graphite mixed through it. This has got two advantages, one is that it's very hard provides a hard surface and it's fairly wear resistant and the other advantage is you don't need to paint it 
because um, the graphite in the epoxy prevents the UV from damaging the epoxy. It's got a simple seat across the top here, just a bench that can be lashed into place, again using the principle of wherever I can use rope or pins. And uh, the rear of the boat is fairly similar, it's got a what I would call a quarter rudder on it, which is um, a rudder um, which is common to a lot of outriggers, it uses a Michael Storer kind of um, release there on the the a bit of elastic around the blade to hold the blade in place and obviously if it hits something it kicks up um, and uh, the other feature I suppose here is that uh, there are stays holding the um, holding the arcas in place they're very light arcas they're only about two millimeters thick and they're uh, 40 millimeters in diameter so just to put some of the stresses into compression rather than just straight bending stress we've got these to resist the force of the outrigger. The outrigger or armour is um, made of fibreglass over um, foam with a stringer down the middle and I shaped that and designed those ones myself. Um, there's a connecting point here which is another stress point which is a, a bend um, and the way this was built was it's bent up out of a piece of another piece of 25 mil aluminium and then lay it up with many layers of fiberglass to form a uh, fairly strong elbow to move the stresses from uh, the upward stress on the armor again these are held in place with pins to the uh, the arcas the outrigger poles the only other kind of Oh, another slightly interesting feature is that I cut the back off the boat. Um, yet to see how much drag this produces. I think in retrospect it might not have been a bright idea, but we'll see how well that works out. The only other interesting thing really, I suppose, is there is a stand-up paddleboard which serves as a safety armour. So this is just roped on very simply to the offside of the archer poles. And... Um, the idea is that if the boat heels in this direction, down that way, then the boat will, um, the, these, the safety armour will dig in and stop the boat from capsizing on that side.